Hi, this is Evangelist Roger Allen inviting you to this evangelistic series, Time is Running Out, starting from the 26th of March to the 9th of April, 2022. We are inviting persons living in Canaan, Crom Point, Lowlands, Kambi, all fields, Buku, Chauvin, Susolans, Bonacord, and Mount Pleasant. We are asking you to invite your friends and come out in your numbers at the Canaan SDA Church, right at Guy Street Extension. We know that persons are going through all kinds of trials. We are here to present the Holy Spirit to you, to heal your wounds and to give you the assurance that tomorrow will be bright. Just in case you are out of the country, join us on Mount Pleasant SDA Church YouTube channel, Canaan SDA Church YouTube channel. Join us on Bonacord SDA Church YouTube channel. Lots of prizes, lovely singing, lovely gifts, powerful Bible-based preaching coming from the evangelist touched by God. Come and hear subjects like, if God puts you on hold, don't hang up. Come and hear subjects like this, is it you will be experiencing a touch from god you will be experiencing a life transforming event time is running out hey everyone happy wednesday and welcome to whispering hope daily sabbath school lesson study today is wednesday and we are going to look at the creation of humanity it gives me great pleasure to announce two great men who will be discussing our lessons with us today. One, Elder Ronald Thomas and Pastor Lawrence Challenger. So welcome to Whispering Hope and good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all and uh, may you have a pleasant day today. So okay. at this time, we're going to bow our heads to pray and we're going to ask Elder Thomas to pray for us to start. All right, let's pray, Father. Once again, we just want to thank you for the blessing of being able to wake up, to get up out of our beds. We want to thank you for the privilege that we have to be able to enjoy the sunrise and the fresh air and even the birds singing and the beautiful sceneries that you had created for our benefit. We pray today, oh God, that we might glorify your name in the things that we do. As we open your words now, we pray that you might open our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. And so we have begun a new quarter, a new topic. We're looking at Genesis. And this week we're looking at creation. And today, Wednesday, we're looking at the creation of humanity. And so customary, we look at our memory verse text which is probably one of the texts we all learned first as children. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. I'm going to begin with Pastor Challenger and then to you, Elder Thomas. What do you understand by our memory text? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. Okay, very good question. Uh in the so that means that there was a beginning for human beings and god who is the creator uh, started everything that we see now that exists Thank you all right and i'm sure i agree with that with pastor challenger there yes there was a beginning for what we see what we come to know as our world as universe and time, space, matter, all of these, there was a beginning of all of it. And unlike the evolutionists who think that somewhere along the line, it was just an accident, the Bible tells us that God, there was a being, an intelligent being that designed and created all of it. Amen. Thank you so very much, Elder Thomas. Now, we have some questions to throw at you guys, and I know you guys are well able to answer these questions. To begin, the creation of humans is God's last act of creation, at least in the Genesis account. Humans are the culmination of the whole earthly creation, the purpose for which this earth was made. And so the lesson asks us to read Genesis 1, 26 to 29, 
and Genesis 2, 7. And I'll read them in your hearing and then I'll ask the preceding questions. Genesis 1, 26 to 29 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, I see, see, I have given you every herb that yields seeds, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, so you it shall be for your food. And now we go to Genesis 2, 7, and it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So to you, Elder Thomas, what is the connection between these two different versions in regards to the creation of humanity? I'm not sure that I really see a difference, but what I see in terms of, in terms of creation, I really don't see a difference, but what I see is a little more detail in one. In Genesis 1, 26, 29, it speaks about God creating man in his image and in his likeness. And in Genesis 2, he tells us that God actually formed man from the dust of the ground. So it kind of gives us a little more detail in terms of the creation of, of humanity. And when we look at the creation of the others, it seems as though God spoke and let the earth bring forth and, and let the water bring forth and so forth. And, and we see that things, even though they are designed by God, as they come forth, it seems as though there was a, a little different way in which God created man in that he, he formed man. It, it kind of gives you the idea that God actually took dust in his own hand and and he you know he he formed it he, he fashioned it and so it was a more intimate kind of stuff that god did when it comes to creating man different from how uh, the other creatures and so forth were created thank you so very much elder thomas pastor challenger you wish to add anything Okay, I think Elder Thomas grasped the, uh, the crux of the matter. What I would say is that in Genesis 1, it seems as though God is speaking and laying out, but in practicality, in Genesis 2, is when he actually knelt down and he formed a man. He started to, to do the things he said that he would have done, especially when it comes to man's creation. So before he spoke, he spoke about what should happen. He spoke about what will happen. And then in Genesis chapter 2, uh, he actually got dirty, some say. He actually knelt down and got, got dirty into making man. Yeah. It's personal for God. Thank you so very much. So, you know, sometimes we think of God as a faraway person. Mm -hmm. But even the Genesis account tells us how close he is to us. Even when he was making us, he came extremely close using the clay or the dust, and then after doing all of that, to breathe into us, to make us a living soul. Okay. Now, that God has created humans in his image is one of the boldest statements of the Bible. So do you agree with the author? And what does it mean, man created in the image of God? So I'll start with you, Elder Thomas, first, and then Pastor Challenger will pick up behind her view. Well, it's, it's certainly a bold statement. I never really compared it with others to say whether it's the boldest. <laughs> I think perhaps even when we go back to Genesis 1 and verse 1, might be considered one of the boldest in the beginning of God. It doesn't 
give any kind of rationale for whether there is a God or not. It just says in the beginning, God. And I mean, a lot of people grapple with the idea of a God. And so to say that God created man in his own image, it's definitely a bold statement. And I think contrast that with the other theories of, of how we get here. It's really something else when you think about God creating human beings. And to say in his image and his likeness, we recognize that it speaks both to physical nature and a spiritual nature. And not so long ago came to conclude that a thought came to me that the way in which God created human beings, we know that God is a spirit. And sometimes we, we like to think that man or God doesn't have hands. He doesn't have feet. He doesn't have eyes and, and like us. But, you know, I remember uh, a pastor said that some people consider, would say that we make a man into God, referring to Christ, that, you know, how can you make a man God? And pastor said, no, God became a man. We don't make a man into God. God became a man. <laughs> and so when you think about God as having, you know, uh, eyes and ears and feet and so forth, when you think about that, some people would say, but no, we're bringing God down to us. But no, the Bible said that God formed us or made us like him in his image. And so I, I, I tend to look at something from this perspective. If I could create, if I could carve a piece of wood, if I was that good, I could probably carve a piece of wood that looks like me. The image of me is wood. If, if I had the power, I could probably give it life to move about. It would have hands and, you know, look everything like me. But it would be wood. But I am flesh. So, so I see that God is spirit, but God has a spirit form. It's just that we can't see God, but he made us in flesh and we look like him and we're in his image. So that's how I understand that. Thank you so very much, Elder Thomas, Pastor Challenger. This is a, a, an age-old discussion and lots of uh, theorizing when it comes to this whole matter. Just as Elder Thomas rightly said that God is spirit. So when we talk about likeness, understand that we are made in the image of God. The image is not God. <laughs> and God is not the image. So we need to make that distinction very early. So we are made in the image of God. We are not God. Matter of fact, the servant of the Lord says that God made Lucifer as close to himself as possible. But we did not get that ex exact distinction. But there are some similarities there. So just as we said, God is a spirit. So when it comes to, to the, the image of God, God has the ability to change uh, form as well. So it is very difficult to rationalize that we, we look like God, we bear that sort of resemblance. But I think that in other ways, the intangibles, we can say that God has made us you know, like him and we have some similarities. Not exactly the same, but we have some similarities, first of all, God is a rational God, and he has made us rational. So we are like him in that way. God is also creative. He has given to mankind the ability to reproduce, and God can make. You know, the devil can't. <laughs> okay, just, just saying. Okay, so he has given us that as well, too. So we are like him in that. God can rationalize. God can, can speak. Matter of fact, in, in Isaiah, he says, come now, let us reason together. So that means God gave us that ability to reason just like he had that ability. So when it comes to the intangibles, it seems as though God made us with these qualities just like he had, right? But when we come to the actual resemblance, the fact that God is a spirit and the fact that God can change form, it is very difficult for us to, to be sold solely on that matter as it has to do with it being made in the image of God. Thank you so very much. Well, you know, when Ellen G. White writes in Education, page 50, and she says, when Adam came from the creator's hand, mm -hmm. he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature a likeness to his maker. All right, so 
Can we move right along to our next question? It says, what is so special about the creation of humanity that God formed man with his hands and breathed into man the breath of life? So, Ella Thomas, I'll start with you and then we'll give us the challenger, the opportunity to speak. All right, so we see God creating human beings, the other form or, or creatures that God created. We recognize and, and it seems as though everything else was created for the benefit of, of mankind. Man became the crowning act and so everything seemed to have been created as an environment that would be comfortable and suitable for man's growth and development and the relationship between man and God. So I think it's, it's quite significant that God would have created man a little differently than he created all the other creatures because they were basically created. Man was really what God intended to create. His, his whole intention was to create man. But before he actually created man or human beings, he had to create an environment in which these human beings would live. So it's like we would say today, it's putting the horse before the cat. So you, you would not, I mean, if he had created man first, where would he put man? How would man live? How would man, you know, man would not understand all these different things that would happen after. He could not have created man first without in created putting sun in its place and water in its place and earth and so forth. And so I, I see it's very significant that whatever God was created first was actually uh, to benefit man and the relationship that man would have with him in terms of responding to God. So I think that is, that is unique because we are the other side of the story speak about survival of the fittest and so forth. And it brings man from a place of, well, monkeys and coming to perfection as it were. But here we see that there was a, a definite purpose and a reason and a design and a desire to have human beings in a particular environment. And so God was very meticulous in making sure that everything was perfect. Then he created man. Thank you so very much, Elder Thomas. Insightful. Pastor Challenger. Yes, I, I do agree with Elder Thomas. You know, God made provision for man before he created them. So when God actually uh, knelt down and made a statue out of mud and then breathed into its nostrils the breath of life, and man became uh, sentient, man became aware of his environment, it was all it was already prepared for him. That shows that, that God is a wonderful God. He is a loving God. He is a providing God. And when human beings really encounter God, we truly understand and we truly see his love. And we truly see his care for us. And we, we see his provision for us. You know, that's why we are to not just worship him, but really give him our all because he has done so much for us. We see his love. We see his care. You know, something I, we, the scientists talk about trees and that's how you use to date the earth by the rings of trees. But one thing I have learned about God is the fact that God, when God created the trees, he didn't make them from shrubs or from, from seeds. He created fully mature trees. The trees would, would have, that would have been at the right peak of maturity so that the fruit could have been the best fruit, you know, and we see right throughout creation that God, God, God spent time to do that, you know, just like a husband is preparing for his wife, you know, he will go out of his way to prepare the house and, and do things and so that when she comes, you know, especially on Valentine's, when she comes home, everything would be prepared, everything would be ready. You know, she don't have to lift a finger to do anything. You know, that's, that's the kind of loving God that we serve as well, too. I know our actions are really inadequate to try to describe God, but we see the provision. We see the love. We see the care 
the fact that he called all other things into existence. But when it came to man, some people would not touch mud. But we saw the creator of all knelt down in mud and formed the man, formed the statue from mud. So he got his hands dirty. His hands would have been muddy. And then after that, he would have put his lips over the mud and he breathed into man the breath of life. So we see when it comes to creation of man that God was personal. You know, and I think that's demonstrative of the kind of love that God has for us because of his love and his provision. Amen. Thank both Amen. of you so Amen. very much. But now, interestingly, even when God was making man, he knew that man would mess up. But I'm so happy that he did not take that lump of clay and toss it aside. Amen. He still in his love made us. Yes. So we move on. How can we assure Christian believers that they can be confident that we were created and did not evolve? Mm -hmm. Beginning with you, Ari Thomas, how can we assure Christian believers that they can be confident that we were created and did not evolve. I think when we look back at the fact that the intelligence we have, when we look at the, the animals and that no other kind, well, you have humankind and you have animals, which is of a different kind and different kinds, even though at times, perhaps, as most of us would have been taught in school, that we are all animals, because that's the evolution side of it, that we are all animals. But we were created differently. I think the fact that we see and accept by faith, because God creation, the whole idea of creation, we accept it by faith. We have to accept it by faith. And I think from understanding that God became man in order to save us or redeem us. And that this life that we have hope in not just this life, but in the life after comes with the understanding that we did not come by chance. We came by design. And if, if we accept Jesus Christ. So I think for the Christian, it should not be that there is a connection between evolution and Christianity. And, and for some, it seems as though some people want to join them somewhere. For the Christian, it, it should be that faith that God created us. And that's why we have hope of a better world, of a new creation, because he created this one. It was marred by sin, and he is able to create it again. If we say evolution, evolution brought about this one, as we think. Evolution says that it's, it goes from chaos to semblance, or, and so we're at the peak, as it were, of evolution. If this is the peak of evolution, then I wouldn't want to see what <laughs> the rest of time would look like. But if this is the place where we're coming to the end of, of something that God is going to recreate again. I would prefer to believe in creation that God created because it gives me great hope that he can recreate again. Amen. Thank you so very much, Elder Thomas. Pastor Challenger. Okay, when we look at the comparison between evolution and uh, creation, we see in evolution, evolution speaks to, to random you know, things happening without um, an act and, and decision. You see things happening without, you know, out of chaos, just as brother said, right? We see chaos. But when we see, when we come to creation, we see intent. God sits down. God forms man out of the dust of the ground. We see personality. You know, we see God, a creator. Let me put it that way. We see a creator who loves his creation enough to be involved in his creation, who takes time to talk with the creation, who takes time to reason and to put everything in place for the created. You know, so it, one speaks of this, this order to order, and the other speaks of 
we see someone like an artist putting things together, putting things in place, and not it just happening, you know, happenstance, as, as it said. You know, we see intent. That, that's my, the substance of my point. When, when we look at creation, we see God intended what man would look like when he formed his face. You know, the, the contours of his face, his eyes, and everything, just like an artist. I think that, that that's a big difference. That's a major difference. And I'll put my, I'll hang my hat any day on creation because it shows that a loving creator and it shows a connection between the created and the creator. Thank you so very much, Pastor Challenger and Ella Thomas. Very interestingly, you know, Ella Thomas, you spoke about faith. To believe in creation, you have to have faith. But it takes double the amount of faith to believe in evolution. <laughs> because if this world began with a big bang, bang, what's preventing it from ending the very same way? And if we evolve from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And you know, even science itself revolts against the teaching of evolution. Because when you look at it, everything in our world is orderly. There's no chaos, there is no disorder. The sun, stays where it is the earth revolves around it we have weeks we have seasons when we look at plant life when we look at environment when we look at nature it testifies of god and we as seven day adventists must stand on genesis 1 1 which says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and as christians if we don't have our faith anchored in Christ, we will be blown away by every sound of doctrine. And so Christ is still the theme of our salvation. And so our next question, we're wrapping up. What should the thought that we are faithfully and wonderfully made do our Christian experience. Sam says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And what should that do for our Christian experience? So we'll begin with you, Elder Thomas, and then we've got to pass the challenger. That is so wonderful because there are times when, uh, even as Christians, we can become discouraged. We can become depressed. We can find ourselves in this position where we want to give up on life and some sometimes we we look at ourselves and and think that we are not worth anything and and so when because some things are, are so tough some things that we have to deal with sometimes can be so hard it can be so difficult and challenging but i think when you think about the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made it should bring that courage that God did not make any mistake when he made you and when he made me, the way in which we were made. And it doesn't matter whether or not we are not, we don't have all the normal things that a human, a natural normal human being would have. Some people don't have all those normal things, but God still never make a mistake. And when we sometimes think about people like Fanny Crosby, who was blind from birth, and she wrote so many wonderful songs. Had it not been that she was blind, perhaps we would not have had those songs. And so God doesn't make any mistake. And so when we think about that idea of being faithfully and wonderfully made, made I think it should bring us back whenever we are depressed or whenever things just not seem to be going right. It should bring us back to recognizing that God do have a purpose for everything that goes on in our lives. And we can learn lessons. And, and that's why sometimes things happen so that we can learn lessons and it should really draw us closer to him because we were made for a purpose. And I think that should be something to encourage us from time to time. Amen. Amen. Pastor Challenger. Yeah. Elna, what can I add to what you said, you know, except to, you know, agree with you and affirm, you know, what you shared that, you know, God, we, we are in, we were intended, you know, um, we have a loving creator, 
And not only did he create us to just stay and to just exist, he still has intervention, although sin has separated between us and him. He still makes provision for us every mm-hmm. single day. He still yes. is in love for us. He sent his own son to die for us so that we can have an opportunity at relationship with him once more. He has promised that he's coming back for us. So as Christians, uh, followers of Christ, followers of the Son of God, we should always, not that we are egotistical individuals, but we should be beaming with confidence that we are so loved by God that he has made such provisions for us that we should never be down or disheartened because there is a God who loves us. You know, I love that song that says, the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. And the love that he has for me is demonstrated. It's not just talk. It is demonstrated in the provision, the care he took to create me. The care he takes to, he, he took and the great pains and lengths he went to redeem me. And the fact that he is, has made provision that he is going to change us in the end. You know, I think that's, that's, that's so wonderful. So Christians should never be down and depressed. A matter of fact, when situations come our way, he's already given us the assurance. His word gives us the assurance that the provision is already made. He says in Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, a passage that I affirm very often, they had no temptation taken me, but such is common to man, meaning that all of us as human beings may go through tough situations, but it affirms that God is faithful, who will not allow the temptation to be above that you're able to bear. And by chance, if it reaches that point, your breaking point, he is going to make a way of escape. So that shows a God who is intent you know, when it comes to his love for us. So we should never, as Christians, be down, downhearted, d- depressed, even though we're going through tough times. God has used these tough times for, to build our faith and trust in him. Because in the end, you know, I love that passage in Daniel, when Michael stands up, when God yeah. is just in his full war regalia, stands up for us. And that is the kind of God that we serve. That is the kind of God who really, expresses his love for us. And I'm not ever down. Situations may be rough at times, but I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and God is still in love with me and all humanity. Amen. Thank you very much. So sadly, Ellen, Pastor, we're out of time. We've had a wonderful discussion. And so I have to ask both of you, beginning with Pastor Challenger, what are you expecting from the study of this quarter's lesson? I'm expecting a journey, a journey back into what we first believed about God, how he first made us. And I expect that I will be affirmed in the, the knowledge and the understanding and the acceptance that God is creator and he created me and all of us with a purpose. And as a result of that, we can live our lives in expectancy of his second coming. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that journey during this particular quarter. Thank you very I'm much. I'm looking forward to faith being strengthened, as Pastor Challenger says, confirmed. Because from time to time, you know, we have these situations where something that was found recently, archaeologists find something and, and they look at it and they say, point to say, well, this confirms something in evolution or something. And it kind of strengthened the one who draws on evolution. And so I'm really looking forward to, to finding more nuggets in Genesis that strengthens my faith in the creative power of God. Thank you so very much, Elder Thomas and Pastor Challenger. To all of our viewers, our loyal viewers in Whispering Hope Land, we want to thank you for spending these few short moments with us. You know, truth be told, God loves us so much that he did not call us into existence. He got down on his knees. And as Pastor Challenger said, he dirtied his fingers with mud. I can imagine he has nails that dirt got on the there. But he did that because he loved us. Because he knew 
that our foreparents would have messed up and it would have cost him his son. But that didn't stop him. And so I give you Jesus, who is our creator and who is our God. And we end with our memory text. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. Have a wonderful day, everyone. God bless. Hello, I'm Vaughn Joseph. I want to thank you so much for uh, being a part of this new channel that I've created, Victory in Jesus. It's a channel that will be bringing forth uh, weekly presentations for individuals to be assisted and to be encouraged in their spiritual walk with Christ. Starting uh, this week, we are going to be commence IBV, which is Into the Bible Verse. I will take a particular Bible verse or two and uh, bring the application towards our modern day life as we live today. I pray that this will be an inspiration to you and that you will continue to be a part of Victory in Jesus and indeed Into the Bible Verse with more programs to come. So like, subscribe and share to this YouTube channel. Share with your friends as we go into the Bible Verse and as we claim victory in Jesus in our lives today. Thank you once again and may God bless you.